John got an early sneak peek into these telephones that were uh, just going into the early part of the beta stage. So for all of you that couldn't make it to that show, this will be the first time that you're able to see the new telephones. And uh, I think you're going to be really excited with what you see. So uh, let's jump right in. So what we're going to have on the agenda today is we're going <clears> to <throat> talk about phones, uh, predominantly what the competition is doing, the people that we're competing against uh, out there in the cloud or hosted arena. Uh, we're going to talk about how you're going to beat the competition with the new phones that we're going to be rolling out and how these new phones are going to present a powerful desktop experience for the user. Uh, we're going to introduce the new ePhone family. We're going to demo the ePhone 4, the ePhone 7. And we're also going to go over pricing at the end and where we're at in the beta program and when these will be ready for general availability. So let's start this off and uh, let's discuss what the market is saying. <clears throat> so what are most cloud providers saying? These are the people that we're competing against. So most of our major competitors, everybody's heard of them, the 8x8s, Ring Centrals, Vonage or Vocalocity, uh, Jive, Finale. There's a lot of different companies out there obviously selling cloud. Even uh, all the carriers now, the people that used to be your partners that are now your competition, they're offering cloud solutions. So. What the majority of these companies I just mentioned are saying is that the power is in the dashboard. And what I mean by dashboard is that's when you log into a website and you operate your telephone from the PC. So they're kind of saying that's where everything is going, this is where our features are, and that's what they want, that's what they're telling the customers. They're not really discrediting the phones, the desktop phone sitting on their desk, but uh, it's not really their focus either. Um, I've actually sat through a majority of demos from all of our major competitors, and, and uh, it, sometimes they won't show the phones at all. They just show the dashboard, and then when you ask, hey, well, which telephones am I getting, they'll just give you a, a snapshot picture of the phone or maybe even send you to the website of the phone they're selling. Uh, and what a lot of them are saying is they're finding it difficult nowadays to differentiate themselves. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the analysts are saying. So one is our competitors. The analysts are saying something similar. They're saying the desktop, the desk phone is still important, but it's not as important as it was in the past. And they're saying things seem to be moving more towards mobile extensions, turning your cell phone into an extension off the phone system that's really big right now and it's not going anywhere, uh, and even soft phones. And it you know, kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit that they're saying the desk phone's not as important because then they're also saying that 80% of users out there don't use the dashboard, the PC, to operate their phone in a cloud environment at all. They're saying 80% of the people are still using Old Faithful, the desk phone sitting on the desk, and then using it for a mobile extension and things like that. So, you know, it makes you wonder, well, if all of our competitors or the majority of our competitors are saying everything's in the dashboard and they're not really pushing the phones, why is that? Well, it's real simple. It's because they have a generic approach to their telephones. Uh, ESI is a telephone manufacturer that's been in business for 28 years, and we've been manufacturing phones the whole time. We've got hundreds of thousands of customers sold through you, our partners. And so we manufacture our own telephones, and the majority of our competitors, they don't have that uh, experience and they don't have that technology to bring forward. So what are they offering? They're offering a generic phone. So the majority of them will have either a MetaSwitch, a GenBan, a Sonus, maybe even an Asterix-based switch out there. And because these companies don't make their own phones, uh, they will use a generic solution, and there's a lot of them. The number one selling basic generic phone in the world, it's a good phone, is the Polycom. And then you've got some others, just to name a few, uh, Grandstream, Snome, Yaylink, there's a lot of other ones out there. Well, the whole point of a SIP phone is their SIP standards. So you create a phone uh, that has star codes in it, and it should work on the majority of different types of servers and switches out there. Um, you put in a star code to do this feature and a star code to do that feature. So um, when you're offering those phones, it'll work on a lot of different things. But if, if the company that owns the switch didn't engineer and manufacture their own phones to make it all work perfectly together, then you'll never have 100% of true integration, which is what ESI gets by manufacturing our own telephones, which I'm going to show you those here in a little while. Uh, 
So our competitors out there, are off, they're all offering the same phones, and that's why when they give a demo or a presentation, most of the time they won't show the phone. Because think about it, uh, why are you going to show a Polycom or a Grandstream or Snome and the customer's looking at two or three other cloud solutions, and they're coming out with the exact same telephone? So why even bother? Let's just focus on the dashboard, Mr. Customer, and let me show you what's unique about us and different about us. And so that's, uh, they're, they're having a hard time differentiating themselves because of that. Uh, not only that, those competitors of ours find it difficult because the customers can actually go out and buy those SIP phones themselves. They can just go to Google and type in the model of Polycom or Grandstream or whatever and buy it, uh, get it at the best price, and then ask somebody to provision it or whatever if that's, if that's what they need to do. The next problem, as I kind of mentioned a little bit about earlier, is these generic phones lack integration. So, yes, you're getting the basic uh, SIP standards for a SIP phone, and you're getting the star codes, and you're doing all the basics, but you'll never be 100% truly integrated if that phone wasn't manufactured and designed and engineered perfectly with that specific type of switch. The next thing you get with these generic phones is programming can be complex, and it's not very intuitive. So, with the majority of SIP phones out there, you will go to your computer, you go to a browser and you will actually log in or dial into that particular SIP phone. And then you'll go in there and that's where you do your programming of star code. Now, if you're doing this every day, yes, you can get pretty proficient and you can go through it pretty quickly, just like anything else. But the question is, the challenge it's a challenge to make changes for the end user. So think of the customer. When they buy a cloud PBX solution and they put those phones on their desk and after they're programmed and, and the company that sold it to them leaves, if they were even in town at all and may have just showed up at their doorstep, how easy it is for how easy is it for them to go in and make changes, um, program a line, an extension, a feature, uh, a speed dial on those telephones and how, and it, you know, uh, if the dashboard or the computer and the phone aren't in sync, it can become confusing and things like that. Um, and it's also a lot of these uh, SIP phones are difficult to navigate. They'll have these little directional pads on the phone, and you're supposed to use this directional pad to look through your call history or to go searching through your contacts. And uh, it looks kind of cool on some of the phones, but when you start using it after a couple of days, you start you realize, uh oh, this is this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be at all, and it bec it becomes very frustrating. So understanding all this, you can see now why most of our competitors that don't manufacture their own phones are devaluing the desktop. Their only differentiation is the dashboard. And so because of that, and because the telephone, the instrument itself is generic, they're wanting to put the lowest and cheapest generic phones out that they can to try to win the deal to keep the costs as low as possible. So if I'll just make up an analogy, if somebody, if a customer is wanting a 10 phone hosted solution, a lot of our competitors are going in with the most inexpensive phone. And so thinking about it, it has limited programmable keys. So it may literally only have two, three, or maybe even six programmable keys on the whole phone, that's it. Um, and then fixed keys, the things that people need every day that have been on their telephones for the last 20, 30 years with premise-based systems that doesn't even have a lot of fixed keys. Now, you can upgrade and go to a higher quality type SIP phone that has more programmable keys and fixed keys, but then you still don't have the integration, you still have the complexity of it, and so on and so forth. Um, but the, most of the time, they're trying to get in cheap and push everyone to the dashboard, and the analysts have already said 80% of the people are not even using the dashboard, and, and selling phone systems is all about the customer and designing a right solution for them. You don't want to put them in something they're not going to be happy with. Um, so the one thing that a lot of these uh, SIP phones do is they are color display and desiless. We kind of have a little joke around ESI, we call them pretty paperweights because some of them have color displays and at first glance they look pretty good until you pick them up, they're lightweight, flimsy, you can just tell they're cheaply made and they're not very user friendly and, and, and they're really, at the end of the day, they're not getting the job done. Uh, and they're difficult to program, not intuitive, and ultimately they lack integration with a the switch. They're generic and ordinary. So um, 
the customers actually want their telephone to be integrated with the dashboard. And, you know, kind of newsflash to a lot of the people out there. They're not going towards a cloud PBX solution or a cloud hosted solution um, thinking that they're going to be losing features and technology that they've had for the last 15 years with a premise based system. They're expecting better technology, user friendliness, and all of those things. So when you're lacking integration with a generic phone, uh, usually the customer's not going to be happy with that. So ultimately, to sum it all up, the market needs better and the customers demand better. And so ESI took all of that into consideration when we were thinking about designing and creating these new telephones. And so we're taking a different approach. We're disagreeing with the majority of our competitors and even to some extent partially with the uh, analysts. We know, we don't think, we know the phone is critically important. The customers are telling us and the proof is in the, in the numbers. And so we knew that the phone needs to be a more powerful experience, not a less powerful experience like a generic phone brings to the table. And we know phones still dominate usage. After the analyst said 80% of the people out there were using the telephones, um, we looked at our numbers. <clears throat> ESI actually has the ability, the ability or the, um, uh, to look at our switches in LA and New Jersey, and we can actually see how people are using our cloud phone system. All of the customers that you have that you sold cloud TBX phone systems to and hosted phones to, we can see what's going on, and 80% of those people are indeed still using the desk set. 20% of them are using the dashboard or some sort of hybrid approach, a mix between both. So 80% of the, of the uh, market isn't wrong. That's where the majority of the money's at, and that's what people are saying. They're still using desk sets. So the right solution is a balanced approach. ESI wants to have a powerful desktop experience for the people that choose to use their phone in that way. And we want to have a powerful dashboard computer experience for the people that want to use it that way. And for your mobile workers, we want to have an extension on their cell phone that has all the features and functionality there too, because um, everybody chooses to use their devices in different ways. So bottom line is customers deserve a more intuitive desktop experience. So we listened to our partners and customers and we said, you know, we let people know a, a while back, a couple of years ago, that we were going to be designing these new phones and we said, what do you need? And these are the answers that we got back from uh, our partners, the regional managers visit with you guys, the executive team has visited with a lot of you and this is the feedback. You said, hey, we need a desi -less phone a color display HD gigabit phone so that we're uh, competing, that even though there's a lot of generic phones out there, these are the things that they have and we need something to compete with them. It needs to be easy to program. We don't want to go through all these complicated star codes, don't want to have to dial into the phone through the browser and things like that. We need something easy to program. Um, you told us that programmable buttons are important. People still want to look at their phone and have buttons to see if people are on the phone, off the phone, and all the things like they used to do. Don't take our buttons away and make us go to the dash if we don't want to. We need fixed keys. Don't reduce the amount of programmable buttons we have and then make us use them for what should be a fixed key on the telephone for things like mute and speakerphone and transfer and so on and so forth. Well, of course, we want to see status, the indication of all of our employees. There's a lot of uh, hosted companies out there that offer the generic SIP phones, and you don't even get BLS on the phone. can't even see if somebody's on the phone or not. Uh, easy access of management of contacts, and you wanted something that was unique and different. We don't want to just say, oh, me too, or we've caught up in these areas. Give us something unique and different that we can blow the competition away with. So with all of that, ESI took all of those things into consideration, and I'm now going to show you that we're ready to deliver the one-two punch. That's the E4 and the E7. So ladies and gentlemen, meet the ESI ePhone 4. Uh, that is a beautiful looking phone. It's a fully integrated phone. It's not generic in any way, shape, or form, and we'll talk about that later. It's desiless. There's no paper strips on this phone anywhere. I can hear your applause from here. Uh, it's a four inch color display. So the ePhone 4, the 4 refers to the four inch beautiful color display that's on there. Uh, HD gigabit. 
Uh, it is easy to program and use, and I'll be demoing that here in just a minute. Uh, there's 36 programmable keys. Unlike the majority of our competitors that are trying to put these uh, phones out there with just a few programmable buttons, we're going the other way. We want a powerful desktop experience. Uh, all of your fixed keys are down at the bottom. You don't have to use your programmable buttons for things that every phone needs and you have to do every day in your daily routine using a telephone. One touch record, you get visual call history and all of that good stuff. So with no further ado, let's go right into an E4 demonstration. Again, for the people that have just logged in recently, we are going to be streaming HD, and so uh, your download speeds are going to be depend are going to play a role in how clear your quality is and and whether you have any uh, jittery type of things like that going on. So I hope everybody can see that, and I'll try to do as little movement as possible so that it's not uh, fluttering on your screens out there. <clears throat> So just as you ask, uh, here we have a DESI-less phone. As I said, no, no uh, paper DESIs on it anyway, anywhere. Four-inch color, it's HD, it says so on the handset. It's a HD handset, and beneath that is the speaker, and that's HD as well. This is a gigabit phone, so it can slow down and work in a 10-100 network uh, or fast gig speeds. It is a full duplex phone. And it does have a headset jack on the back, as well as a headset key right here off to the side. Um, what you'll see right here in the display is six programmable buttons on the left-hand side, and you also have six programmable buttons on the right-hand side. So these can be programmed as anything you want. You can make it a line key, like you see in the top left corner of the display. You can make it a line. You can make it an extension for one of your coworkers. You can make it a feature, any feature that comes on the cloud PBX phone system. Um, or you can make it a speed dial for somebody that you want to call. Um, so the next thing I'll point out is right here in the middle of the color display, you can see what uh, today is. It says it's Friday, June 24th, and it shows you the time, 11.24 a.m. This phone uh, will say the person's name that it belongs to, in this case, Cole Hamels. Uh, he's actually the pitcher for your Texas Rangers, who happen to be in first place in the American League right now. So we're proud of those guys. This is the Texas Rangers demo room in Dallas, by the way. Uh, it also shows you what extension uh, Cole Hamels is. He's 3407. Um, now, these little arrows to the left here and to the right, you can actually page over. So right now you're looking at 12 programmed buttons. If I hit it again, now you have 12 more. And if I hit it again, you get yet another 12. That's where you get the 36 programmable buttons. So this phone is going to work great for a lot of small to medium-sized businesses, even for the receptionist, because you have 36 keys. You may not need sidecars or anything like that in this example. So looking at the display here, um, on the left side, I'm not sure how clear it's coming through wherever you're at, but you can see in the top left corner, Williams, there's a little green phone handset icon, and that means he's available. A little further down, Ron, uh, his handset is actually red. That means he's on the telephone right now. I'm going to go to another screen over here. Um, uh, line one up there in the top left corner, if I was to actually make a call. I'm going to mute it so we don't get any feedback, but you can actually see that line one is in use because it's lit red. You can also see that I made a call. It shows the timer right here for the duration and what extension that I have dialed. I'm going to go ahead and hang up on that call. So the next thing I'll point out on this phone is this little icon right here. It may look a little blurry where you're at, but it's, it actually is a number one, and it's inside a little yellow icon deal. And what that is telling me is that I have one new voicemail message. So when you have a new voicemail, your blue voicemail key, along with your indicator light up here in the top right, they're both going to flash. Uh, if you're 
on the phone, you'll see your indicator light just like it does on a comm server in 900. It's going to stay lit red. So if someone walks in your office, they know not to come in talking. All right, so if you want to check your voicemail, you just hit your voicemail key. Enter your password followed by the pound key. You have one new message. For new messages, press one. For old messages, press two. So you could press and listen to your new messages, your old messages, whatever you'd like to do right there. You could delete them, save them, forward them, whatever you want to do. This other icon to the right over here, it's also a little yellow circle with a one in it, and it's representing call history. <laughs> So if you come in the display right here and you hit your history key, um, it's going to have all of your most recent calls. Um, we've done a lot of testing on this phone, but it'll show you your inbound calls, your outbound calls, uh, missed calls, and you can actually uh, scroll down right here and you can scroll through. And you can see there in red was a missed call from Nolan Ryan. And if you want to call somebody back, or right here in the display, the center key says call. And if you actually press that, you're making a call. And it's just that simple. Um, so the next thing we're going to show is the fixed key. So I want to stress again, think of the competition who's devaluing the desk phone. 36 programmable buttons. This is an end-to-end -end uh, integrated solution with IntelliTouch. It was designed and engineered to work perfectly with your dashboard and your cell phone mobile extension, ditto, which is going to be called um, ePhone Go in the near future. So, um, so let's jump down here. These are your fixed keys. Most of our competitors, if they only give you a few programmable buttons up here, you sometimes will have to make these fixed keys. You'll have to put them up here. Okay, we're not making you do that. So right here is your volume up and down. Below that is a headset key. So if you have a headset plugged in, um, you can be walking around the building with a headset on, and you could, say, be in the kitchen, and when you get a call, you'll hear that beep in your ear. You just hit the button, and you answer the call. You can hit it again and hang up. Uh, this is your do not disturb key, so if you press it, it says right there in the display, do not disturb. So any calls coming into this telephone will go straight to your voicemail. They're not gonna, it's not going to ring and bother you or bother anybody around you uh, while you're in do not disturb. Um, if you're actually on a call and you hit it, it'll actually be mute so that the person you're talking to can't hear you, obviously. Uh, then you got your speaker key right here, and you can adjust your volume up or down. Uh, you've got your hold key, you've got your conference key, so with this phone you can do a three-person conference call. Um, you've got your transfer key, you have call forward, so if you want to, you can hit call forward. Who do you want to send it to? 3403, for example, and hit OK. And it says right in your display, your calls are always forwarded to that extension. If you want to turn it off, it's real simple, just hit call forward again and hit OK and bam, you have now turned it off. Everything is very simple, very intuitive on this telephone. So um, let's uh, talk a couple other things. So I'm gonna make a call over to Nolan Ryan here. And let's mute it so we don't get any feedback. So while I'm on a call, again, it shows the duration of who I'm talking to. So if you wanna do a conference call, you can actually hit the conference key here or uh, you could do it through the color display up here. So I'm going to add a call right here. And it says, who do you want to add to the conference? Let's add uh, the Rangers' best catcher ever, Pudge Rodriguez. Okay, so he answers. Let's mute it. So what you'll see on the bottom is Nolan Ryan was holding. I've called Pudge Rodriguez. His, uh, it's colored green for him. And then right here it says merge. So when I press that, I have now merged all the calls together, so I have a three-way conference going. Uh, you can see in the display in the top corner that line one and line two are in use now, okay? And you can see over here, here's the two people in the office that I conferenced in, Nolan and Pudge, and their icons are red because they're actually on the telephone. Now, if I want to, at any time when you're on a call, you can see over here where it says record, I could actually hit that button and I could actually start recording the conversation. So I just pressed it and if you look up underneath the time, it says recording and I do have my phone muted for, so you don't hear the feedback. That's how you do a conference call. You could actually stop your recording as well, just like that. All right, 
so now I'm going to jump over to the dashboard and show you something that's very unique. And because ESI manufactures our own phones, we can actually program the telephone through the phone itself, or we can do it easily through the dashboard. And let's do that real quick. So here is the dashboard connected to that E4 phone. So what you would do is you just come over here where it says phones and click that. And then right here where it says program phones. This is powerful. For those of you out there just getting into the uh, cloud hosted business or for those of you that have been doing this for a while with one of our competitors, uh, this should really impress you because there's nobody else out there doing this with those generic phones. We're not dialed into the phone itself through a browser. We're in the user's dashboard. Okay, so remember you have 36 programmable buttons. Here's the first 12, here's the next 12, and here's another 12. So if I want to program a key, all I have to do is click on the key and pick what you want to make it. Let's say I want to make it a call pickup key and hit apply, and it's that simple. I click the next one. If I want to make it a call back, I just hit apply. Look how quickly I'm programming this phone. You know, no star codes and all of that hassle where everybody out there gets frustrated. What I'm telling you is you can do it. The customers you're selling this phone system to, they can do it. Anybody can click a button and say, oh, I want to make this uh, Bob who's at the office here at ESI. It, pop, it pulls his name out of the directory and just hit apply. Boom. It's that simple. Um, I want to make this um, Amy Smith. Just type her name, first name, last name, extension, anything you want, bam, it's right there. So you get the point. And if you don't like something, you can come down and just click it and just clear it out. See how easy that is? And then when you hit apply, <clears throat> it'll do this little uh, uh, drop down thing from the top. And it'll tell you, you need to restart your phone to pull down this programming. So essentially what it's telling you to do is you can unplug the phone from the back, pull the Cat5 out and plug it back in, and it takes about two and a half minutes. And that programming, whatever you do on those 36 buttons will be there when it comes back up. Another way you could do it is you could go right here and you could just scroll down to utilities and you could hit reboot right there if you wanted, either way. So before we uh, move on in the presentation, there's one more last thing, and right here is this menu help key. And so if you press that, you have some different selections in here. So the first thing is help. We have something coming in the near future. We're going into beta on it very soon. It's called eHelp. So all of you that's been with ESI for a long time, you know how powerful the help key was on all of our phones. This is something that's very, very unique. I haven't seen any other phone in the industry do it. After all, we're the ones that created e uh, help to begin with on the business telephone set. So when you hit it now, what it's going to do is it's going to send an email instantaneously to the user. So it'll pop right up in your email inbox. Uh, if you're in your car on your smartphone, of course, you can get your emails there too. So uh, if, if you are using uh, uh, ePhone Go or Ditto. So anything you need help on at all, you could hit the help icon, and here comes an email. And when you open the link in the email, it takes you to a specific website that ESI has created. And it's very simple for the user, and it's just links. Would you like to know how to transfer, make, you know, transfer a call, how to do a conference call, how to uh, uh, – you know, check voicemail, how to program a speed dial on your telephone. Anything the user wants to do, they click the link, and bam, here comes a short 30-second to one-minute video with somebody standing there in front of the phone saying, let me show you how to do this real quick. People absolutely love it. We've been in the beta program with this and, and dealing with a select few people. Uh, it's awesome. People absolutely love it. Think of employees getting hired in the future and different things like that. Um, that come on at a company and they're saying, how do I use my phone? Well, it's real simple. When it rings, pick it up. And if you don't know how to do something, just hit help and watch a quick video. It'll teach you on the fly. And you can also, for all those of you that know, you can also get those videos through the dashboard as well. All right. So let's go back to the presentation for just a minute. And give me about 10 seconds to set something up.
Okay, so we're done talking about the E4 for the moment. So let's move forward with our presentation. So think about this. When you want to make a phone call, everybody out there does it a different way. Some people, as we were mentioning earlier with the analysts and everything, reach for uh, the desk phone, the instrument sitting on the desk. Some people uh, reach for their cell phone in the office or, of course, when they're out of the office or whatever, but some people tend to go to the cell phone first, or especially if it's an extension off of the phone system. And then some people, 20% of the people, grab the mouse. They're going to make calls and do it through the dashboard and things like that. Nobody's wrong. It's, it's whatever's comfortable for that user and how they choose to use the phone. There's also a lot of people out there that um, uh, want to, they, they do it different ways. Think of the desktop. You can, you can call somebody out of your contacts. You can call them out of visual voicemail and place calls from there. You can go to your call history, inbound, outbound, and try to find the person you talked to just a minute ago and call out of there. So different people use it in different ways. But Earlier in my presentation, um, I, I said that we were listening to our partners and customers out there, what they wanted in a phone, and the very last bullet we heard was make something unique and different. So if the analysts are saying more people are headed to the cell phone, which is an extension off of the phone system, and more power is going there, and ESI also knows that we want a more powerful desktop experience, we thought of something very unique. We said, hey, why don't we combine the two? So combine the mobile user experience, the cell phone that everybody is using and, and has come to know and love, and mix it with the power of the desktop. Why not make a smartphone on the desktop that's fully integrated with our switches, creating a perfect user experience for everyone? So with that said, uh, meet the ESI ePhone 7, which is going to revolutionize the way the customers do business. So taking a look at this phone, it is a smartphone for the desktop. Um, and before I, I, I click the next key, think of it this way. Every one of you on this uh, webinar right now has some form of a smartphone. You either have an, some form of an Android-based smartphone, an iPhone, or whatever the case may be. And the majority of your kids do too. Five, six-year-olds are on those playing games and making calls nowadays. So. Everybody understands how to use them, and so ESI's thought was with our ePhone 7, this smartphone, is let's make something that when you set it in front of the customer, there's little to no training involved. You can pretty much just stand behind them and let them go to work on it, and they will almost already know how to use the telephone just because of their smartphone that they use every day. So this is a Desi-less phone. It is a beautiful color display. Of course, it's HD handset, HD speaker, gigabit. Uh, it has contact management in it. And, and I was kind of alluding earlier, people want their contacts on their phone from their personal contacts to their coworkers and all the employees that they work with. Uh, they want to be able to set favorites up and things like that. Of course, I would need my call history on this phone, uh, inbound, outbound, missed calls, and all those things. Click the dial capabilities. Uh, visual voicemail, I want to be able to sift through those and find the one that I want to call back down. This phone has an, an intelligent dial pad, which we'll get into in a minute, but it's going to operate just like it would on your cell phone. Uh, and zero setup and learning curve. So I want to really stress this and, and think about it. We've already talked about the competitors selling these generic phones that they're devaluing and how difficult they are to program and how hard they are to use, especially for the customer. This is the easiest phone in the world to set up. There is no such thing as any phone anywhere else that's easier to set up than this because there is no setup. What I mean by that is if you're a certified ESI partner, you program what we call the domain, which is the phone system, auto attendant, all the programming. And the second you plug in an E7, it pulls all of the intelligence down instantaneously. Other SIP phones, you have to go in and program and provision and set up the star codes and do those things. None of that happens here. And in the agent program, for those of you that uh, are agents out there sending leads to ESI, and we do the heavy lifting and selling for you, well, we program the phones in the domain. But everybody that wants an E7, you plug it in and boom, you're set up and, and rocking and rolling. There, there is absolutely nothing to program on these telephones. So, with no further ado, let's jump right in and do an ePhone 7 live demonstration.
Okay, let's make sure I get the best view on here. And I'm going to try to, I get excited, but I'm going to try to go uh, as slow as possible so that the frames per second uh, doesn't have a lot of flickering on your end and things like that when you're streaming HD. All right, so here we go. There is the beautiful ePhone 7. So let's uh, talk about what we're looking at on the screen right here. In the very top left corner, you can see that it's, uh, and, and sort of in the middle of the screen, it says it's Friday, June 24th. Um, right in the middle, one of the things you always want to know is what time is it? It's 11.42 a.m. Central Standard Time here in Dallas, Texas, or Plano. You can see ESI's logo on the phone. Uh, yes, this logo can be changed out for whichever company is purchasing it. Their phones could have their personal logo on there. Uh, in the top left corner, um, this phone belongs to Adrian Beltre, the third baseman for the Texas Rangers. And um, in the top right, there's some widgets and stuff that I'm going to talk about here in a little bit uh, towards the back part of this presentation. Now, what you'll see at the bottom is what people are familiar with on a cell phone already. So you've got your back key right here in the bottom left corner, your home. When you click that, you're going to your home screen just like on your cell phone. You've got volume down and up, whether it's for the handset or the speaker phone, whichever one you're actually on. And then you've got four icons. You've got your contacts, you've got your history, you've got your voicemail, and you've got your intelligent dial pad. So uh, let's jump right in. So I uh, do want to point out these phones still are in beta. I don't anticipate to have any issues, but if there's a little glitch anywhere here or there, um, we are still in the, uh, we're in the end stages of the beta program. We'll talk about that later, but uh, let's jump right in. So going into contacts here, and I'm going to go to personal. So with this phone, um, what you told us is that you needed to be able to put personal contacts into your phone. So you can do that. So what you could do is you could easily uh, go and log into Google account and instantaneously it will sync all of your contacts into this phone. So if you had seven or 800 contacts, the second you do the sync, boom, they're all here. And what's powerful about this phone is let's say you're in your car and uh, driving around and you add a con somebody calls you and you and you hit add a contact to it it's instantly going into your e7 as well because they're staying synced up uh, so when you look at these here's some of the contacts that i can scroll down just like you would on a cell phone you can scroll that way if you choose to open up one of the contacts you just simply touch it it's a touch pad obviously and uh, here's a, a contact that we're looking at. You see the little star off to the right? That's how you could set it up as a favorite. Uh, you also have phone numbers in there. You've got their main business telephone number. You've got their mobile number. You've got their email address. Uh, the little pencil off to the right uh, is an edit button. So if you actually click that, uh, let you take a look at this for a minute. Uh, it's allowing you to edit. So you have multiple phone numbers for the person, but you can set one of them as the primary because you may have four phone numbers for somebody, but there's one that you want to call uh, anytime you hit contact, and that's what it will do. Now, you've also got uh, little little red icons off to the right where you could actually delete it if you want. And then the plus icon is, of course, if you want to add a phone number or add some other number to put into those contacts. Now, if you look at the bottom, it says delete contact, you just press and hold it. And so if you wanted to delete the contact altogether, well, it's telling you how to do that. So just like on a cell phone, if you come down here and hit this button, you can go back to the previous screen and here was all your personal contacts again. Now, if you want to move over at the top here, you see where it says coworkers, you could actually touch that uh, button and it'll go to coworkers or like on a cell phone, you can swipe right or left or up or down. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm kind of at a weird angle because of the HD here, but I mean, not the HD, but yeah, the HD camera is right in my way, so it's kind of hard to do this. I'm going to have to stand up for a second. So here what you're looking at is your coworkers. These are all of the employees that are at your office and what extension they're at. 
but they don't have to be your office. That's the great thing about a, a, a cloud phone system is it's unlimited. It can scale up. You could have 500 employees if you want at one office. They could be spread across 60 offices. It doesn't matter. But what is powerful about this phone is you can have all of your coworkers at your office or all the offices right here in your E7. So right here, you're looking at employees here at ESI. So let's talk about a few of these. So Bob Russo has a green phone, a green icon. It's a little handset off to the right. That means he's available. Uh, Cameron Short is a red circle with a line through it. That means Cameron is in Do Not Disturb. I cannot tell you how many generic SIP phones out there don't even have the capability on the on the handset, the instruments themselves, to even show Do Not Disturb. You have to go to the dashboard with the majority of them to see it. And that's very frustrating to 80% of the population that don't use the dashboard. So they can't tell if somebody's in a meeting or out to lunch by the typical Do Not Disturb. And that can be a tough pill to swallow for somebody that's had it forever on their premise-based phone system. Um, as you scroll down, I'm trying to see if I can find somebody on the phone. There is David Thompson, and you can see his, uh, he's on the phone because his icon is lit red. So what you can do, and l let me point this out. Um, all throughout this presentation, I've been telling you that a, a lot of our competitors have devalued the desktop where we're bringing it more power to the desktop. This phone has unlimited buttons. Like a lot of people out there, six, eight, ten programmable keys. Even our E4 is loaded with 36 programmable keys. But you you can you make those keys speed dials and and uh, extensions and things like that. This is unlimited. If you have 800 employees, they're all in here, and you can quickly see, like you can right now, if they're on the phone, off the phone, in do not disturb or whatever. So it's unlimited. So all of your um, Personal contacts are in there, so you don't need to use a button for a personal contact to speed dial somebody. It's They're all in there. All of your coworkers are in there. Now, um, in every organization, you don't talk to every employee, usually on the bigger companies. You, you know, you may have 150 employees and you only deal with 15 or 20 people on the daily. So what you could do is you can come in here and click David Thompson, for example, and I can make him a favorite. So the little star off to the right, all I have to do is hit that icon, and you'll see that it turns yellow. And so then uh, I can swipe from right to left, or I can just come up and hit the favorites key right here at the top, and there's David Thompson at the bottom. Now, one of the things a lot of your eyes are looking at is some of those icons say in the office. Um, I'm not going to let you know too much on what's going on under the hood, but I'll tell you a little bit. ESI is working on something called e-location right now, and we will be the first company rolling out anything like this. And uh, basically, um, you can set geo fences up, and you will be able to tell if an employee is in the office or out of the office. So you can see right there it's saying these certain employees are in the office. They're testing it. And uh, you can actually eventually down the line be able to tell if they're at their desk or not and different things like that. So um, the next thing you can do is you, inside the contacts here, is you can go to groups. So we're looking at a, a business desktop telephone right now. Our competition has functions and features like this, but most of them you're having to go to the dashboard to get it. We're bringing the powerful dashboard experience to the 80% of the people that don't use the dashboard with this telephone. So they got their personal contacts that are syncing with their cell phone at all times, all of their coworkers here, unlimited buttons and fixed keys. You can set whoever you deal with every day as a favorite. And then right here in groups, this is what you can also see in the dashboard. So you can see the various departments and what's going on. So I'm gonna go down here to the sales department at ESI and select that. And here I can see all of my employees here at ESI. Uh, Adrian is on the phone and he's obviously in the office testing e-location. Um, you can see uh, Clayton's and Do Not Disturb and, and whatever. If you want to call somebody from here, of course, you can just reach over and touch the icon. So if I wanted to call uh, Paul Sewell, I could just hit that and bam, I'm making a call. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So um, that's how awesome this is. So. 
Uh, you can also come in here to groups and you can add anything you want. So if you want to add a group yourself and name it like um, uh, sales A team, uh, closers and sales B team needs improvement or something like that. I'm just joking, but uh, you can name any group or do anything you want. So where this is really powerful is if you have a bunch of locations. So where uh, cloud uh, hosted phone systems come into play is when a company has multiple locations, it's, uh, it's almost crazy anymore to go with a premise-based solution because cloud beats premise in almost every possible way when you have multiple locations. And so through this telephone, you can actually see employees in your accounting department at your location, or it can be the accounting department at all the different locations. So if I said call Jay Walling and in accounting in my Austin location, you could go to your phone and hit accounting and find him there. Or if you remembered his name was Jay, but you didn't remember his last name, you could easily find and search for people like that. Okay, so, uh, so that is, in my opinion, the most powerful thing on a desktop phone that you can handle all of your contacts like that, just like you would through a, it's bringing your smartphone in and all of your contacts that are syncing, it's bringing the dashboard in and putting it all on a desktop phone. Uh, the next tab over is history, and you guessed it, just like on a cell phone or anything else, you can see uh, in the top left corner, it says all. So this is all of my call history. So this is my inbound calls. This is my outbound calls. This is my missed calls. You can see uh, Nolan Ryan in the middle of the screen there, uh, this little icon here. Uh, this is voicemail. So check, that's when I check voicemail. If I click it, I'm going to be able to listen to that voicemail message. Uh, this was a missed call from him right here. So if you go to the tab to the top right or you can swipe over, uh, there it says miss. These are just my missed calls. If you want to call the person back, of course, just touch the red icon off to the right-hand side and bam, you're making a phone call. Um, the next tab uh, is voicemail. And if you click voicemail, and I've got three of them in here right now, so let's start at the top and look left to right. You've got your new voicemails, you've got your saved voicemails, and then you've got the voicemails that are in the trash folder. So your new voicemails right now, we've got three of them. We've got one from John Doe, Demo E Plus, and, and Demo E Plus. So if you wanted to uh, check a voicemail, you could click it. And right here, you could rewind, you could play, or over to the right, you could fast forward. As it stands right now, the rewind and fast forward moves in two second increments. We're not sure if that's gonna stay two or go to five. We're still thinking about that, but it does move in two second increments right now. This little green uh, phone icon right here in the top right is going to call that person back. Um, you have a timer right here that's going to be a reverse timer. So as you're listening to the voicemail, it tells you how long it is. And then bottom left corner over here, you've got, you can save it, you can delete it, uh, you can share it, or you can forward it. So those are all your different options. So again, you can swipe it and um, here are the saved voicemails, and you can listen to those. And if you swipe again, these are the ones that have been put in the trash bin. If you put it in the trash bin, it's going to sit there for seven days, and then it's going to be gone for good. So just uh, uh, wanted to point that out. So the next thing down here in the right corner is your dial pad. We call this the intelligent dial pad, just like you have on your cell phone. Again, bringing the smartphone to the desktop. So when you pick up your cell phone and you want to call somebody, you don't have everybody's telephone numbers remember, uh, memorized. So what you do is you'll go to the keypad and you'll start typing the first three letters of their first name, first three letters of their last name, or maybe you know the, the first three numbers, 214-972, and, and then it starts to narrow the search down and you can just pick who you want. That's exactly how it's going to work on this telephone. So if I wanted to, um, there's an employee here, Jason Laffey, many of you know him. If I wanted to find him, I could simply dial L-A-P-P-E. And I'll give it a second so y'all screens out there can refresh and you can see it. So after I typed his last name, it selected him out of all of my contacts, and there he is. If I want to call, this is the call button right here on the screen. I just press that, and we're making a call. 
All right. So um, if I wanted to call, uh, let's say, Billy, um, he's one of my regional managers for the South Central Region or the Central Territory. I could come up here and start typing his name, B-I-L-L-Y. And there he is. So there's a Billy Go, there's a Billy Bug. So you just pick the number you want to call and then just hit the call button. He may answer, I don't know. If he does, we'll just tell him. Hey, Billy. Hey, I'm uh, doing a demo right now, so uh, if you'll just stay on the phone with me for a minute while I show everybody the uh, interface. All right, so I'm going to mute it right now. So what you can do is if we wanted to record the call, you can come over here and hit record. And right now that's one touch recording. I'm recording that conversation. Uh, I could also come over here and hit it again and I could stop the recording. The audio icon in the middle, if I click that, I switch uh, from the uh, speakerphone to the handset and I can go back and forth. I also have the transfer key so I could hit transfer and send the call wherever I want. So it says, who do you want to transfer it to? Same thing, I can pick an employee here in the office uh, I'll just hit AMY for Amy, and I could select Amy right there if I wanted and hit OK, and I would be making a call. I could also put the call on hold. Um, the next thing that I could do if I wanted is I could create a uh, conference call. So let's do that. So Billy's going to stay on the phone with me. I'm going to hit add a call, and it says, who do I want to add? I'm going to add Nolan Ryan, one of the other phones in my demo kit in here. So extension three four zero you can see it narrowing down and there it is so i'm going to place a call to mr nolan ryan all right and then if you look at the screen uh billy is now on hold i've called nolan ryan and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hit merge and merge all three people together and we're actually on the uh, conference right now with uh, billy and nolan ryan all right, so let's end that. Okay, so that is everything around the intelligent dial pad, which is going to make things wonderful considering the fact that you're going to have tons of contacts in there and coworkers, and it's going to make uh, calling people really simple. Uh, you don't need a uh, sidecar if you're a receptionist because you could have hundreds of employees or however many locations. And when you're on a call, just hit the dial pad, or you can go into coworkers and see if they're on the phone, off the phone, quickly send the call. You have all of that power here, so no need to have all of those sidecars uh, if they don't want to. So uh, looking at the home screen here in the top right corner, um, you have a uh, little widget there, and when you open it up, it says preferences. So in here is where you can set different things on the phone. So the top one says manage accounts. So if you were to click that, um, that's where you would go in and uh, put in your login information to Google so that you could sync all of your contacts and turn that on. Uh, you got call forwarding options, so always when busy, you can select those. Uh, eHelp um, is there, so that's where you set it up and put the email address in. So when somebody hits the help key, bam, it sends them an email with all the links to the video so they can get the help they need on the spot when they need it. Of course, you got your volume settings for the handset and speaker. You got different ringtones to pick from. Uh, the display brightness, you can set it to low, medium, high, you know, off when there's no activity. You can, you can choose all those things. Uh, sleep timer for when the display goes to sleep, phone updates, and all that information. Uh, you can also click that little icon in the top right corner and you can read and kind of look at the uh, uh, useful information about the ePhone 7 there as well. Okay, so that was all in the top right uh, icon up there. So the one next to that is a question mark. And so when you press that, just give me just a second. This is one of the things I mentioned earlier in the demo. eHealth is a really it's more alpha than beta, and so um, let me see if, I, if it's going to work for me. So right there, I press it, and I don't know if you can read that, but what it says on there is uh, help email sent. It says we have sent your help email to, and it has the email address that it was sent to. 
So that is a powerful thing that people are going to love on the E4 and the E7. And the icon next to the question mark is a call forward icon. So when you press that, it says, who do you want to call forward your calls to? So you can send it anywhere you want to any number you want. In this case, uh, uh, we were using Billy earlier, so we'll just uh, type Billy's name here. And let's say we want to send it to his telephone. So we find the person we want to send it to and then just hit OK. And right there on the front screen, it says all of your calls are being forwarded to Billy. Okay, I cannot tell you how many generic SIP phones we pulled out and put in an ESI cloud solution because they were frustrated because they hit DND in the dashboard and didn't know it on the phone and couldn't get their calls to come to their phone or they put it on the phone and it didn't reflect in the dashboard because once again, they're not truly fully integrated. Here, if you put yourself in DND, it's showing on the dashboard, it's showing on your cell phone and it's showing right in the middle of the screen so you never forget it. If you want to turn it off, all you have to do is hit that icon again, and bam, you've turned it off. It can't get any easier than that. And then the icon right next to that is a circle with a little line through it. And when you press that, boom, you have now put your phone uh, into Do Not Disturb. So it says Do Not Disturb is enabled. All right, and to turn it off, of course, you just press it one more time, and, and, uh, and that's it. So that is the E7, and we, like I said, we believe this is a major game changer. So I'm going to back it up for just a second and put the E4 phone right, ne right next to it. 